y'all welcome back to apron strings into the kitchen and I'm so excited last night when I went to bed I had oh, 10,992 subscribers and I thought I bet you when I get up in the morning I'll reach 10,000 and I did and it wasn't long that it was 10,008 and I'm not sure what it is right now I haven't checked but I'm so excited so we're gonna be having a giveaway for too long I'm not sure just when I'm going to do it, but in the very next week or so. So y'all be sure and check back so you'll know what to do to get your name in the pot because there's going to be three or four gifts that I'm going to mail out. It won't be something huge, but it'll be something that I enjoy using and I think you'll enjoy using. So anyway, yesterday I did something I haven't done by myself before. Our store had uh, St. Louis ribs on $1.77 a pound, so I had bought four racks of ribs and wanted to grill them on the, the Primo, which is like the big green egg, but it's made in Georgia. There's nothing, it's not outsourced anywhere, and the egg is made in Mexico. So when I, that was a deciding factor for me. When I bought it, I got the Primo because it's the only one made in the U.S. And I have the large XL, the oval XL. So anyway, I was going to do ribs, but I never have done them by myself. Troy always kind of does the grilling. So I just got myself out there and started my charcoal and got it up to temperature and got my ribs on. About 30 minutes later, I didn't have any heat. So I called him and I said, baby, what do I do to fix this? He said, I'll come do it. Well, I knew what I had to do. I had to take the ribs off, take the deflector plates off and put more stuff in. But together we got it done. So all of my ribs got done about 11 o'clock. I was so tired. They didn't sound near as good at 11 o'clock as they did that morning. I told y'all all that to tell you this. I'm gonna warm ribs up. I'm gonna wrap them in tin foil, put them in the oven and heat them. But I wanted something good to go with them. I have some pinto beans cooked. And on the markdown vegetable part at Kroger while ago, they had some yellow squash for 99 cents. I got five or six squash. So I've got them cooking. I uh, caramelized an onion and added one clove of garlic and added about two tablespoons of butter. And I just cut those squash into the circles and they're cooking over here. But I'm gonna make some cream spinach to go with them. So I'm gonna bring y'all along for the cream spinach. It's nothing hard. And it calls for a clove, a whole clove. And I don't like clove, so clove is not going to live in my spinach, but everything else ought to be good. So let me get y'all situated where you can see what's going on. To start with, all I have to do is melt some butter and put my flour in it and let it brown a little bit and add my milk and let that thicken and add my garlic and a bay leaf. And I would be adding nutmeg and cloves, but I'm telling you, I'm not going to do that. I might put a pinch of nutmeg, but no clove. And let that simmer for a bit, and then we take the, of course, the bay leaf out. And um, if I had a whole clove in there, it would come out too. Then we get our spinach finished. So let me get the stove ready, and I'll bring y'all over here while I make my little roux and get that part going. And then we'll have some cream spinach to kind of celebrate 10,000 people. I thought I'd give y'all an added bonus. This is my yellow squash. And I just cut my uh, onions in slices. I didn't dice it real little. And I let it caramelize in a little bit of olive oil. And then when it got caramelized, I added uh, a clove or two of garlic and let that cook just for about 30 or 40 seconds. I can't smell it because COVID left me with no smell. I hope it gets healed real quick. But uh, that's why I just did it about 40 seconds. I didn't want it to burn. So. I added about a fourth of a cup of water and I added onion and garlic powder. I just sprinkled it in and I'm in some salt and black pepper. And I'm just going to let this get tender and uh, we'll eat this along with our, uh, now the kids may want, Jordan's here, he may want some cheese on his and he may not, I don't know, but as soon as it gets tender, I'll just turn it off. But I was just going to show y'all and tell you what I did. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is cut up a half of a stick of butter. This ain't margarine, it's real butter. Y'all know me. I'm just cutting it up so maybe it'll melt a little quicker over a medium heat. And once that gets melted, I'm going to add one-fourth cup of flour and make a little bit of a light brown roux, and then I'll add my milk to that. Okay. 
I've got my butter melted and I'm going to add my fourth of a cup of flour. And once you cook that, you just want your flour to cook. You don't want it to taste like raw flour. I'm going to get through with all of this. And then I'm not going to film it, I don't think, but I'm going to can some. They had chicken thighs for 99 cents. And I think I'm going to, well, I know I'm going to. I went and bought me some for that purpose. I'm going to can some bone and all where I'll have some uh, canned that has good rich bone broth on them. That'll make the juice on them so much better. So the plan here is to get this cooked a little bit for a minute or two. Then I'm going to add two cups of milk and I have actually added a cup of whipping cream and a cup of milk because this is creamed spinach, right? And I know that's fattening, but right now I'm going to do that. And I probably would do it tomorrow or the next day too. I like it to taste good. But you can use just regular milk. You can use stem milk, whatever you want to use. But it is a, a light brown, so that tells me that it's cooked. And I'm not trying to make brown gravy. So I'm going to get my milk in there. Let me add my sweet milk to my whipping cream here. I'm going to tell y'all something. The best price for whipping cream is Aldi's, if you have an Aldi around. It's a very good price. Don't you know that would be good gravy? Oh my word. Let me get my little stirrer thing in my watcher here. I like to use this to stir my gravy because I can press it to the bottom and whisk it around and it uh, stirs it up really well. Okay, I'm going to add my garlic clove in. Just put it through my press here. Just let that cook just a jiffy. I'm going to get my nutmeg and put me just a pinch in there. Not sure how I'm going to like that, but I guess I'll find out. Right, I'm adding a half or four ounces of cream cheese, half of a brick. Maybe it'll do quicker. I'm going to take my bay leaf out. You just want to stir that around in there and let the cream cheese melt. There's a barbecue place up close to where my son lives at Sherman, Texas. <clears throat> I don't remember the name of it. But they have the best cream spinach. So when you get a plate and you get to get two sides, well, if you're like us, me and my boy, we get two cream spinach. It's delicious. Love this scan pan because it don't stick, man. You can just stir it around in here and get it all mixed up good. Do me a taste test off of this whisk because it's silicon, so it's not going to be hot. That is delicious. Now we need two 10 ounce bags of spinach. But it's going to puff up real big, so I'm going to add one and stir it around and let it melt. This is washed and ready to use. I'm going to let this wilt. Oh, I saw something in there and it was my finger showing through the clear part. Here I was thinking, oh my word, it hadn't been washed very well. Okay, I'll bring y'all back in just a minute when I've got this all stirred in. Okay, that's that one ten ounce, that whole bag. It isn't completely wilted, 
but it's wilted enough that I'm fixing to start, start putting in the second bag. We're going to have a nice big helping of this, but it'll be good leftover and I will enjoy it as long as it lasts. Bag number two coming in. It's funny how much spinach cooks down, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to get this and stir it in and I'll be right back. I've got it <clears throat> all in here and that's both bags. But I'm going to let it uh, simmer for a little bit to make sure that that uh, spinach is real tender. And in the meantime, I'm going to go get some ribs out of the ice box and uh, get them wrapped up in some tin foil and get them in the June oven. It's heated so they'll be nice and hot when my guys get back from the station getting some gas. Jordan is going to mow and he'll also ride the four-wheeler a bunch and that takes a bunch of gas because he rides it for hours. We have to make him come in at 10 o'clock at night. He's out there riding that four-wheeler. He's 15, be 16, the 26th of this month. He was born on my son's birthday. My son will be 50 and Jordan will be 16. So I'm going to put a lid on this and let it uh, cook down a little bit more and I'll bring y'all back here in a minute and we'll do a taste test. Okay y'all, I've got my pan of spinach done and it's so creamy and so yummy. I've got my ribs heating over there in the June oven. Got my squash cooked. My, my pinto beans are heating up. I cooked them yesterday. And we're going to have a good meal here in a minute. When I get a plate made, I'll take a picture of it and show y'all what it looks like. Okay, y'all. I'm going to get a bite right out of this skillet. See how it tastes. But I won't get but one. I'll be nice and mannerly. Hot. Give me a word. Mm. That's one of them where you want two scoops of it on your plate. That's yummy. You see how easy that was when you tell people. We're having cream spinach. They think, ooh, touch her twice. She can make good stuff. Y'all need to try this recipe. It's good, and it's a good addition to a lot of different stuff. I'm going to get our plates made and sit down and eat with Troy and Jordan, and I'll take a picture of the plate where you can see it. Now, I've told y'all for months now to be stocking your pantry and getting an extra thing or two in there, and don't stock something just because it's on sale. Spend your money on something that you know you and your family will want to eat should there be a shortage of it. Should something happen that we can't get to the store. There's shipping issues right now. I was told that Augustine Farms is not going to be manufacturing and canning any more of their vegetables and stuff before January because they can't get the product. That's going to trickle down, folks. So y'all need to be stocking your shelves with some things that you know that you're going to eat and things that are filling and satisfying like beans and rice. It'll fill your stomach up, keep you from getting hungry. Oatmeal. Oatmeal is good because it fills you up and it keeps you, um, you're not hungry for hours after you eat it. So put your thinking cap on about what your bunch eats the most and try to get your pantry stopped just a little bit. We're still in hurricane season here. We got couple of months almost left. We never know what's going to happen. So, but we do know that there's some issues going on because there's some shortages. So I'm not, like I told y'all, I'm not a prepper. Ever since I married, I've kept my pantry stocked. I could cook anything I wanted to cook just about any day of the week. I had my things in my pantry. When I used it up, I replaced it with another one. For instance, I like German chocolate cake. And when I used my bar of German chocolate when I went to the store, I got me another one where I'd have it on hand. Things like that. Be, think about it. Think ahead. Keep your pantry stocked. Have a little bit extra. Everybody can't afford to go spend $200 on extra stuff. 
Now, if you'll spend five extra a week putting up some more canned goods or another bag of beans or rice in your pantry, it'll be stocked before you know it and you won't have to worry. Okay, I'll step right down off of my box and be quiet for a while. Thank you everyone from Croctober that's come over and joined the channel and has commented. I love comments because I like to talk, so I like to answer y'all. I love your input telling me that you use the recipes and you enjoyed them. And for those of y'all that are brand new, I make aprons and sell them too. This is one of the, I call this my regular style. It just slips over your head and ties. And then I make the chef style, which is what I had on in the Croctober. It pulls over your head, but it has the string that goes from one side around your neck through a channel and down the other, and it's adjustable up and down. So tall or short people, it'll work fine for them. I'm going to be doing a video shortly on a bunch that I've got made up and show you some cloth if you want to place an order. If it's if you're interested, they're $45, shipping included, and they are these are double-sided and top-stitched. Very, it's good quality work if I do say so myself. Okay, I'm gonna get supper finished and we're gonna eat and um, then I got a can of chicken thighs, I told y'all. So I got some hours ahead of me. The good Lord bless and keep you. Share my channel with your friends. Keep coming back and watching and uh, use these recipes. That's what I'm on here for. I wanna share good stuff for you to cook in your kitchen. So let me know if you use them and how y'all like them. I'll see you in a day or two and we'll talk about a giveaway.